Oh, cool. Someone left a comment on my video. Wait. No way. I love getting comments on my videos. It means you guys actually liked my content so much that you're willing to take time out of your day to either give me some encouragement or even discuss the video itself. Heck, this guy even caught something I was wrong on. That's awesome. Please do that. But what I never expected was to get a comment from the subjects of one of my videos. Yes, these guys are the ones behind the orb. You guys remember, it was that ball that claimed to use UV light to disinfect things, make your food last longer, and kill odor-causing bacteria. That was the single most research-heavy video I have ever done. I had teams of people working on that video, just out of the kindness of their hearts. They were helping me and giving me information just to make the video as best I could. I feel like I nailed that one. I honestly feel like that's one of my best, if not the best, video I have ever done. It's also become the second most watched video I have ever put out. It's only beaten by the WashWow video. Which I honestly don't understand. The WashWow video was so poor with its sound balancing that I actually had to redo my entire setup just because of it. But even though the orb video is one of my most watched videos, it still only has a little over a thousand views. Again, I'm a small YouTuber. We're not going to get that many views this early on in the channel's life. With that small amount of viewership, you'd honestly expect a company just to overlook my channel and not even care. Seriously, if they actually left a comment on one of my videos, it might honestly cause a Streisand effect. You would think they would understand this and just pass over the channel without a second thought. At least, that's what I thought. Nope. The guys behind the orb actually left a comment, and it is incredible. So, seeing as I'm a small YouTuber with nothing better to do with his life, I'm making this video in response to that comment. Hold on to your butts, it's about to get rough. Because that wasn't the end of it, it gets even better. You see, they didn't stop there. They found the Reddit thread where my video was posted and also left a comment there. It's pretty much the exact same comment, just worded and formatted better. It does, however, carry a bit more information, so I'm gonna reply to that one and not the YouTube comment. First off, you're afraid that I might delete your YouTube comment. I will never do this. Unless the comment is clearly spam, I will leave anything that you post up on my videos. You could be calling me names with the finesse of a 12-year-old on Xbox Live, and I will still not remove your comment. I will, however, reply very sarcastically. Next, let's see what you say about the orb itself, and how it works. You state that the orb goes nowhere near the 200 nanometers that I mentioned in the video. That's good. That means it's not harmful to humans. It also means that it doesn't do anything but light up purple. Seriously, in order to actually do any good, it would need to hit at least 280 nanometers. You claim that the orb, at best, hits 375. You do understand that a lower wavelength is more powerful, right? If the orb is capable of disinfecting anything, so is this $10 flashlight I found on Amazon. 375 nanometers. But there's even more proof that the device is completely ineffective, and it comes straight from their Kickstarter video. So what's so special about our orb antimicrobial lights? It uses sub-UV light wavelengths that are safe for humans. Sub-UV light. So, normal violet light? So you just threw some purple LEDs in there and called it a day. Seriously? Also, you seem to think that I was attacking your acne treatment device. And yeah, I was. You see, light therapy is effective at treating acne but it's normally done in a dermatologist's office and the equipment necessary is massive. The only thing that I could find that is even close to your handheld device were these. But there's a problem. Notice how the patient's eyes are covered? It's because the blue lights necessary to treat acne need to be so bright that they could actually cause real damage to someone's eyes. The lights need to be this bright, otherwise they will not penetrate the skin and they will not hit the bacteria. 
if the light can't penetrate the skin and actually encounter the bacteria that's causing the acne, the light will do no good. Looking at your device, there's no way it gets that bright. But that's not your only light therapy device. You see, in my video, I wanted to focus solely on debunking the orb, so I never used the most egregious example of your devices, simply because it would require too long of an explanation and the video would have been over 10 minutes. But now I will. Just remember, you asked for this. You also carry a device that claims to use red light to treat pain. Yes, apparently according to these guys, you can treat chronic pain by just holding a couple of red LEDs up to it. Only, that's not how it works. Don't get me wrong, light therapy is an actual thing with proven results in clinical trials. However, here's the problem with your device. Light therapy for pain relief involves super, super bright LEDs, or even a laser to penetrate the skin and get into the mitochondria of the cells. It kind of encourages the mitochondria to reduce inflammation, thus reducing certain amounts of pain. Your little hand light here wouldn't even treat a stubbed toe. The last part of your comment claims that FDA cleared means something comparable to FDA approved. This simply isn't true. If you want the actual source that I used in order to write the script for that part of the video, there will be a link below leading you to the FDA's website. It will explain what I'm about to say in much greater detail and likely be more informative. To put it simply, the FDA uses a three-class system in order to determine what type of testing a product needs in order to be deemed safe. Class 1 items are things like protein powders and dietary supplements, things that don't really need testing. We already know Flintstone vitamins won't kill you, let them go through. Class 2 involves slightly better testing. What the FDA will normally do is take your device and compare it to other devices that have already been deemed safe and cleared. After that, they normally pass it through. Class 3 involves crazy amounts of testing. I'm talking actual clinical trials. It involves proving that your device works, making sure the side effects are reasonable, and most importantly, proving that it's safe. Class 3 devices involve things like x-ray machines and defibrillators. Things that need to be tested in order to prove that they are effective. So, no, the fact that you're FDA cleared does not mean that your products work. Here, you even admit that you have done no testing with the orb. Which, as far as the FDA is concerned, is fine. Because your product is nothing more than a bunch of purple lights. I'm gonna be completely upfront with you guys. I had no idea how to handle this situation. To be honest, I don't even know if I'm doing the right thing in making this video. But it just seemed wrong not to acknowledge their comment. I mean, come on, it was the first time any company has actually replied to me about their Kickstarter. That's insane! I guess, in a way, thank you, Revive Light Therapy. I'm gonna learn a lot from this experience. You guys have a nice day. I have work to do.